How does food affect fertility? In this review paper published in 2021, researchers searched through evidence from over 100 research articles based on studies done around the world and found that diet pattern and intake of certain foods and nutrients can and does impact fertility. I'm going to summarize what they found under 10 topics. And remember that there are timestamps below if you want to skip ahead to any particular topic. Topic number one is dietary patterns. The dietary patterns that most came up in these studies were the Mediterranean diet, the prudent diet, and the Western diet. In men, both the Mediterranean diet and the prudent diet were associated with better sperm quality. Both of these diets are rich in fruits, vegetables, fish, poultry, legumes, and whole grains. The stuff that you know is good for you. The prudent diet in particular was linked to increased sperm concentration and higher levels of testosterone. Both this diet and the Mediterranean diet were tied to a reduced sperm DNA fragmentation index. This means that the DNA of the sperm of the men following these diets had less errors. So guys, what you eat on a daily basis literally affects the DNA, the quality of the DNA in your sperm. Multiple studies showed that a Western diet filled with sweets and snacks, refined grains, processed meat, especially red processed meat and animal fat was associated with abnormal semen count, lower sperm motility and abnormal sperm shape. In women, the Mediterranean diet has been positively associated with fertility, pregnancy and live birth. Now I'm going to talk about specific foods and their effect on fertility. Let's start with dairy. Dairy we can define as anything that is derived from cow's milk. In men, a high intake of dairy products has been linked to lower levels of testosterone, follicle stimulating hormone, and luteinizing hormone. You might be wondering, what are those last two? These last two hormones also help to assist in sperm production. This isn't the full story though, because the fat content of the milk and the hormones that can get mixed in with that fat may also play a critical role here. Dairy contains estrogen, and some studies show that for boys and men, consuming dairy and dairy products may precipitate greater levels of female hormones and less testosterone. We still need more research on this topic though, because there is an almost equal number of studies saying yay or nay when it comes to the effect of dairy on male fertility. But what the trend does seem to be is that full fat dairy, like whole milk, um, may have a negative impact on male fertility. In women now, a high intake of dairy was associated with lower ovarian antral follicle counts. This is a measure of how many eggs a woman has left, particularly among women with fertility issues. Results from the Nurses Health Study 2, one of the largest studies ever done, suggests that dairy does not affect ovulatory infertility. However, an ovulatory infertility was linked to low fat dairy intake in this study. This means that people who consumed tons of low fat dairy were more likely to have this type of fertility problem. The jury is out on this one though, because there is evidence from other cohort studies out of Denmark that suggests that low fat dairy can actually increase fertility. And there are also studies saying that there is no association. I know that saying inconclusive or no association is the most boring thing you can do in research, but this is the truth. In women, we don't have any clear associations for the effect of dairy on fertility, not yet at least. And dairy is a hard one, right? Because there are so many factors that go into that glass of milk becoming what it is. Like where was that cow raised? What was that cow fed? Was the feed treated with pesticides? Was it the right diet for the cow? Because that can even affect the fatty acid composition. Was that cow treated with hormones and antibiotics? There are so many variables when it comes to dairy. So um, we just need more research. Okay, so moving on to the next topic, let's talk about meat. For men, hormones injected into meat to promote the growth of the animal may adversely affect sperm concentration. This applies to red and processed meat especially. In women, animal protein was shown to have no effect on fertility in one study. In a different study, eating red meat and poultry was linked to a reduced risk of infertility in women undergoing fertility treatment. Two studies, of course, is not a preponderance of evidence, so this is another area where we need more data to be sure. 
I would guess that the type of meat, the way that it was prepared, how processed it is, if it was fried or baked or steamed, and if it was fried, if it was deep fried or pan fried, all of this matters. And that's part of what's creating a lot of noise in the data. Um, but for now, no clear association here. Now, within the realm of meat, we have fish, seafood, and there we do have clear associations. In both sexes, fish intake has been associated with a shorter time to pregnancy and better fertility. One important thing to point out here is that fish oil supplements did not have the same effect. You cannot take the easy road here. You have to actually eat the fish to enjoy the fertility benefits. And the difference is nothing small either. We're talking up to 60% greater fertility after a year of eating fish every week. And remember, if you're concerned about mercury, which is a valid concern, the idea here is not to eat fish morning, noon, and night mm. for nine months. No. The US FDA recommends three servings of fish a week, and that should be enough to give you those benefits. And remember, I'm not here to give medical advice. I'm just giving information. I can't tell you what to do because I don't know you, right? So you want to make sure you're taking into account your own life circumstances and the advice of your medical team. Now onto topic number five, soy. Soy is an excellent source of protein if you're not a fan of eating animals, but the controversy comes in because soy has hormones called phytoestrogens that are very similar to the estrogen that is naturally produced in our bodies. So you might assume, okay, it has these plant estrogens. It's probably good for women, bad for men, but it's not that simple. Really, this is another case where we just don't have enough data pointing in either direction. Um, so that's as much as I'm going to say. Okay, now let's move on to topic number six. I'm gonna get even more specific. First, I talked about dietary patterns, then specific foods. Now we're gonna talk about nutrients, starting with fat. Fat itself is a pretty broad category because we have a lot of different types of fats. We have short chain fats, long chain fats, unsaturated fats, saturated fats. You get the picture, lots of variety here. The main ones that matter when we're talking about this data is saturated fats, trans fats, and unsaturated fats. So basically in the villain category, we have saturated fats, trans fats, and omega sixes, which are a type of unsaturated fat. And in the hero category, we have omega threes, another type of unsaturated fat. Omega threes may help with the regulation of hormones that are important for implantation and pregnancy. Dietary fat matters a lot for sperm health too, because the type of fat that you eat is what ends up making up your sperm cells. Unsaturated fats, mainly DHA, accumulate in the sperm cell membrane, and more DHA has been linked to greater sperm concentration and better motility and shape. And yes, there are studies showing that eating high amounts of foods that have these omega-3s like fish and walnuts does help to improve these measures. Fish intake among men has also been associated with a shorter time to pregnancy and a reduced risk of infertility. Omega-3s are also associated with greater testicular volume, which is positively correlated with sperm count, while omega-6 and trans fats are associated with smaller testicular volume. Trans fats are related to negative measures like poor semen quality and lower sperm count. Artificial trans fats were banned back in 2015. That's how bad they are. They were banned by the government. Nevertheless, they can still be found in some corners of the food supply. They occur naturally in meat and dairy, and they are also formed during high heat frying, like deep frying. So chicken wings, donuts, french fries, all of these deep fried foods also have trans fats, and they have even more trans fats if they were prepared using oil that was used over and over again. A higher intake of saturated fat has been linked to fewer mature eggs in women undergoing in vitro fertilization or IVF. A high intake of trans fatty acids and a low intake of omega-3 fatty acids has also been linked to poorer fertility outcomes. On top of that, trans fats have been shown to increase the risk of metabolic disorders that negatively impact fertility, like insulin resistance and inflammation. All right, on to topic number seven, carbohydrates. For the purposes of this video, we're going to keep it simple and just limit carbs to two categories. Our refined processed carbs like bread, cupcakes, and soda, and our unrefined unprocessed carbs like potatoes, beans, and apples. 
In men, a high intake of carbs in general has been associated with a greater prevalence of problems with sperm motility, i.e. their swimmers don't swim as well. In women, there is more evidence that the type of carb matters. Both total carb intake and intake of carbs that really spike your blood sugar, basically refined carbs, are linked to a higher likelihood of ovulatory infertility. There is also research showing that higher intake of whole grains is linked to a higher probability of live birth. Topic number eight is alcohol. If you haven't seen my video on the general effects of alcohol and health, I definitely recommend you check it out. So I will leave a link in the description box just for you. On the topic of fertility, daily alcohol consumption in men is linked to reduced semen volume and lower semen quality. However, occasional drinking seems to be okay. The same can be said for women, drinking alcohol on occasion does not seem to have any negative or positive impact on fertility. Topic number nine is caffeine. This is another one where it doesn't seem to matter if you drink coffee or don't drink coffee, if you consume caffeine or don't consume caffeine. Um, there is no clear indication that drinking caffeine affects fertility at all. Still, the general recommendation is that you limit to two to three cups of coffee a day. That's about 200 to 300 milligrams of caffeine per day. And when I say coffee, I am talking about coffee, not those sugar laden creations that we are seeing on TikTok. Like, look at this. On to topic number 10, sugar sweetened beverages. That includes juice, soda, energy drinks, Starbucks, anything that has tons of sugar added to it. In men, the intake of sugar sweetened beverages and sweet snacks has been linked to lower sperm concentration and quality. Women who drink sugar sweetened beverages, including energy drinks, are more likely to have poorer fertility compared to women who avoid those drinks altogether. This is because sugar may affect reproductive hormones, how eggs mature, and even the release of eggs from ovaries. Okay, so I've covered all 10 topics, but I have one bonus for you, pesticides. Fruits and vegetables are obviously good for you, but the pesticides that they are typically grown with aren't. There's data showing that fruits and vegetables with low pesticide residues, like avocados, beans, and onions, were associated with healthier sperm, while intake of high pesticide residue produce like strawberries, apples, and spinach was linked to poorer semen quality. If you have the money to buy organic, this may be one good reason to do so. If you don't have the money, it's okay because we're all ingesting pesticides one way or another. The whole world is polluted, so we're all in this together. Now, as a responsible scientist, I want to add the following caveat to the research that was discussed in this video. Much of the data that I reported on was correlational meaning that it came from observational studies and not intervention studies. This doesn't mean that the data isn't valid. It just means that we have to remember that there is a huge potential for other variables aside from diet to affect these outcomes. When it comes to something like diet, it's very, very hard to isolate that one aspect of a human being's life as if it were a pill or something that we can just change in a lab because life is so complex and people are so complex. So it's really hard to measure the effect of just diet and tie it to a single outcome. The air we breathe, where we were born, how we make a living, what unmeasured pollutants are in the water supply, many factors affect our health. So remember to keep a holistic view of these results. And that brings me to the end of this video. Let me know down in the comments below which of these findings surprised you the most and what changes do you think you'll make to your diet with this information to improve your fertility if that's something you're up to do. Take care.